go to ch Oh, hey, sorry about that. Hi, I'm Kofi, the only person that hates the sound of his voice more than you do. Before we get to part two, I wanna highlight a couple of things about our channel. First of all, we reached a million subscribers. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed, liked, commented, and watched all of our videos. It means the world to us, it keeps us going, and we couldn't thank you enough. The next thing is that Secret Base has a Twitter account, which is the best place to stay up to date with all Secret Base content, including our written posts. Yes, we have a website. I wanna say that because we do, and we have some fire written content. So the best way to keep up with that is following us on Twitter, especially following all the members of Secret Base on Twitter. The third and final thing is that Secret Base now has merch. You can get cool items like this Fumble Dimension mug, beef hoodies, and more. Our store periodically updates with new items, and we always don't know what to make. So if you want Fumble Utopia and Fumble Chaos merch, spam the comments so I can show my boss. I think that Fumble Utopia soccer scarves would look incredible, but that's not the point. I've taken up enough of your time already. Without further ado, here's the part two. October 19th. Before the game, our striker Lee Smith gets a hip injury in practice. He'll be out for three to six months. Damn. However, we're able to rally the troops and only be down three at the half. We already miss you, Lee. You get well soon. Newcastle starts it off with a header in the early minutes. Godman tries to answer, but like most of his other shots, he misses because I'm not gonna lie, bro, he's terrible, man. We also concede a penalty kick for the second straight game for no reason. This is beyond frustrating. Fumble Utopia can't get anything going right now. October 26. Fumble Utopia doesn't take a shot for the entire game. This is peak football cowardice. This is what the fans paid to see. Oh hey, Mark Goblin finally scores a goal against Liverpool. About fucking time. We lose 2-1, but honestly, I'm just happy that we scored. Against Liverpool, isn't that cool, guys? November 2nd. Dele destroys us with two goals early in the half, and the route pours on. Utopia doesn't look like they want to play anymore, and I can't blame them. Bradley Big still hasn't scored all season. We attempt to hold a team meeting and use positive reinforcement to rally the troops. It doesn't work. November 9th. We give up a penalty kick to Tottenham in the 87th minute. Bro, what?
November 30th. All right, now Kim retired, so John is taking over Fumble Chaos now. Um, he has a interesting no defenders tactic, and we'll see how that goes in just a second. The good news, Fumble Utopia broke their losing streak. The bad news, it's a scoreless tie. <laughs> oh dear lord. Guess how many goals were scored in this game? 17. Guess how many goals Fumble Chaos scored? Three. Azuka gets suspended. Oh boy, this is the first game of this shit. December 3rd. Aston Villa beats us so bad that our players personally refund fans their tickets. That's $110,000 out of their own pockets. December 7th. After over 20 games, we finally have our first penalty kick. Bradley Biggs gets his best chance to score a goal all season. Oh man, he made it. Congrats, dude. What's the worst that can happen? An own goal, that's what. Damn it, Lee Patton. But Biggs isn't going to let his first goal go to waste. Mm -mm. He has other plans. Southampton tries to come back and even the score up, but they're unable to. Which means two things. Utopia just won another game. And two, Southampton sucks, bruh. <laughs> December 14th, the players refund the crowd again. <laughs> I think if anyone should be paying them out of pocket, it's John. This is John's idea, it's not on the players, right? Before the game, word passes on that Mike Dodd wants to leave Fumble Utopia. If you don't know who that is after watching all of this video, it's because he's the backup striker and I don't really care about him that much. You'll be alright, dude. Neil Holt skips practice because he's also mad. This is weird that all this is happening after a win, but I digress. We lose to West Ham.
December 21st. We hold Manchester United to a scoreless tie in the first half. We hold them scoreless for 79 minutes. We go up against Man City, the best team in the league. And you know what? Just roll the film. I don't I don't have anything else to say. Well, broke the chart, broke the chart. Everything Tim accomplished has been completely erased. It's my fault. Longtime viewers know I love the strategy of jacking everything up to level 100 and riding it until the wheels fall off. Remember when that worked? Remember the good times? When I designed a one play playbook with one wide receiver and actually put up 60 points in a game? Man, I do not belong here. Well, uh, 22 to 1, that would mean um, I gave up a goal every like four minutes and 45 seconds or something like that around that territory. Yeah, that's, that's impressive, honestly, not going to lie. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, it's hard to imagine how many more goals. That's something I would really like to figure out if two teams cooperated. Like, okay, how badly can one of us blow the other out? It probably wouldn't be that much more than 22 goals. Like, you could probably score upper limit. It would probably take you, like, 30 seconds to get down the field. So in, like, 90 minutes, you might be able to score, like, 180 goals if both teams uh, cooperated. But as far as, like, one team doesn't want it to happen, 22 is about as high as I can possibly come up with, right? How could it be higher than that? Right, and for us, we are playing one of the best teams in the Premier Division. So this wasn't going to end well regardless. However, 22 to 1? Jesus! <laughs> it's okay, you can be mad at me. Everyone else is. I'm not, I'm not mad, I'm more just impressed. This is this is just <laughs> impressive work. On this, I, I, I gotta hand it to you, man. When I first heard, you like, sound, you sound like a parent who like uh, <laughs> found out that his kid dug like a fifty foot hole in the ground in the backyard. You're like pissed off, but like also that's weirdly impressive that he did that. Yeah, it's like all the all the dedication and hard work put into digging this hole. <laughs> I, can't, I can't really be bad. I can't. You kind of have to have respect for it. Yeah, this is what this is the world we operate in. <laughs> our recent play is so bad that our team members are starting to get dropped from their national team rosters. Ayo.
December 28th. Morale is fading fast. The ship is sinking. Fumble Chaos have given up 142 goals in 20 matches? Setting the record for most goals allowed ever in the Premier Division? With half a season to go? January 4th. This FA Cup looks like it's going to be a standstill until Jake Lewis rips an absolute beauty in the 77th minute to put Utopia up. Mike Dodd caps it with another goal to give Fumble Utopia their first two-goal lead in a long time. The opposing coach wasn't happy after the game, saying that we're not as good as we think, which begs the question, does Paul Cook think we think we're good? After losing by 12 to Preston in the third round of the FA Cup, we have a meeting with the board. They say that John's job is under serious threat. He has to get nine points in the next five games or else he's gone. January 7th. After losing to Liverpool for the third time this season, Kim decides it's time to retire. It's time for John to take control. John inherits a last place team with the chemistry in the cellar, and players that have no interest in signing a new contract when the year is done. The fans aren't even thrilled with the hire, as Gary Sims says he doesn't care where John's from. He's not good enough. January 18th. John's 424 Rocket League strategy is already different than both mine and Kim's, and the team is already responding to that change well. Even though they are a very defensive team still, Fumble Utopia is also able to create more chances. Not that they're always good chances, but I'll take that over what we've seen for the first two thirds of the season. Even though we have a scoreless draw with Newcastle, we shot the ball 16 times, which is more than our previous three games combined. After a week of simming loss after loss, I have new energy to actually finish this project. Is this hope? This is hope, isn't it? I hate this. January 21st. It's 7 in the morning. I can't sleep, so I decided to simulate more football manager. We have a match against Chelsea. 
and my god gives us a quick lead. I'm wide awake now. We take a 1-0 lead into the half. We blow the lead. Man, it looks like another missed opportunity for another draw. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, man. In the 89th minute, Fumble Utopia has a corner kick and a chance to win the game. This is stressful. In the end, we draw with Chelsea, which is honestly incredible. I'm going back to sleep, and at least fake Twitter is off our back. For now. February 1st. As promised, John Boyes has been fired from Fumble Chaos. After 57 days in charge, the Chaos Boys era is over. <laughs> 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 Kofi, did I really get fired by a video game? Yeah. And it only took like three games to do it. You know, it took, we didn't get fired in head coach. We didn't get fired in out of the park baseball. And the thing about a uh, football manager is that it just showed you to the next screen and then you didn't have a team to coach. It didn't have like a pop-up that said you got, you have been fired. It was just like, yeah, we warned you. Now you don't have so, a team to coach. <laughs> so did, did the game continue, but just like, I don't have a team anymore? Yeah, that's what Like, happened. see, that. Okay, so that's the game they should make, is that it starts with football manager, but then uh, if you get fired, you're just like a man, and then the real game begins, and it becomes <laughs> like an open world sandbox game where you just roam around to England and like eat bad food. Yeah, and people recognize you in the street. And yeah. He messed up Fumble Chaos. <laughs> get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting chased around by Dickensian street urchins. Like, oi, mister! <laughs> okay, so the list of people who are getting mad at us, uh, all the viewers, all the soccer fans, uh, fans of Troy University, you, uh, everyone in Great Britain, uh, that's almost everyone on Earth by this point, and we're going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> February kicks off and our mate Bradley Biggs takes home English Division Player of the Month. This is big after all of those articles of Biggs not scoring a goal for like half of the season. We take a loss to Leicester. It was a disappointing performance overall, and the schedule is not getting any easier. So, I know this is ahead of schedule, I guess, but I'm taking over Fumble Chaos now, and after seeing what John's formation just did, I don't think we're gonna do that much better, so... Our first match back is against Manchester United. They score in 16 seconds. I swear he was offsides, but I mean, well, it's 14 to one now, so I guess that offsides call didn't matter at all. In a 1-1 tie, Adam Tracy decides to foul for no reason. We're losing to Nottingham Forest. We lost to Nottingham Forest.
February 8th. So I realized I messed up a small part of my tactic. I had a strategy on that would have us play to the middle of the field, and uh, no one's in the middle of the field. So I changed it to the left side of the field, and let's see how that fixes it. Um, we hold a 1-0 lead into the half somehow, and West Ham ties it up in the 76th minute, and they take a 2-1 lead in the 82nd, and make that 3. No, it's now 4. So... In a friendly, we make short work of SCR, but again, we're winning all the games that don't matter to our overall goal. Actually, never mind, I lied. We drew somehow. So, fuck. Bruno Fernandez drops a hat trick on us. I got nothing. I have I have nothing to say. Totally fair. February twenty sixth. Utopia has just suffered back-to-back -back 04 losses, which makes me honestly want to log off. February 29th. Before the game, a media member questions our toughness. Have they seen us play? In the 82nd minute, Dodd has a chance to put us ahead 2-1. He doesn't. Utopia have now gone 12 Premier League games without a win. March 7th. Before the match, I get word that our goalkeeper is mentally cooked. His progress has been on the steady decline for the past three months. We're also well on the way of setting a new record for winless games. We start off with an early goal by Biggs, but VAR disallows it. Even in the virtual realm, VAR is inevitable. In another VAR incident, we award Southampton a penalty, but they're so bad they don't even convert it. <laughs> It seems like no one wants to win this game. In the 58th minute, Mike Dodd has had enough of the tie. And so has Dugdale. Southampton isn't done yet. They score in the 89th minute and look to strike again. Thankfully, Southampton run out of time and Fumba Utopia is finally back in the win column. March 14th, Utopia are three points away from not being relegated, and that's the play at this point.
Aston Villa jump out to a 2-1 lead, which in the words of Fumble Utopia fans, is not good. But again, Tom Dugdale doesn't want to lose. Fumble Utopia have a corner kick in the 91st minute. A chance to take down Aston Villa and get three points that they desperately need. Nope. March 21st, Aston Fisk gets a lecture from the referee mid-game. <laughs> Our head coach review is here. We have a D, which is better than John's E rating. I have six games left. I think I can make it to the end of the season because I don't know what I'll do if we run out of coaches. Doug Dale gets off to a hot start with a header in the 29th minute. He doesn't want to be relegated. Sheffield United evens up the score to make it 1-1 at the half. Doug Dale has had enough and he scores yet again to make it 2-1. John Aqua tacks another shot on to make it 3-1. Will we be able to keep up the good work versus a struggling Tottenham team? No. We deal with Crystal Palace, a team that hasn't won in five games. That should be an even match. Nope, they score in 14 seconds and four goals in 18 minutes. Excuse me while I do anything else with my time. April 11th, Fisk gets ejected again and suspended for two games. Our relegation is confirmed. We have a goal differential of negative 203. A disappointing draw against Burnley puts us five points behind. We score in the first minute against Liverpool. No way this lasts. Okay, there it is. May 2nd. After going down 7 0, Finity has had enough and wants to leave early. F same, dude. Tom Dugdale scores twice for the squad. He's carrying the team the best he can in the latter half of the season. He caps it off by scoring a third goal. This is already the greatest individual performance in Fumble Utopia history. Dugdale is done scoring for the day. Psych! He scores again! What an all-star! What is going on? With that win, Fumble Utopia slides into 19th place, baby. May 9th, the board is deeply saddened by our leadership of the team. A Sky Sports poll says John should be fired. Godman and Dugdale make the team of the week, but we lose 2-0 to Man City. Our fate is sealed. We've been relegated.
Fumble Utopia finishes the Premier League season with 5 wins, 25 losses, and 8 draws. They also have 23 goals and 23 points total. Tom Dugdale is voted our fan player of the season. And everyone wants to discuss personal matters. No one wants to stay at Fumble Utopia. The board satisfaction of us went from a D to a C plus and I have no idea what we did. There are no notable highlights from anything that's happened. The players give back 50k. May 17th. Before the match, uh, Sion Pool is mad at me for not playing him. And I'm not going to lie, I have no idea who this is, and I created the team. Um, I don't even know why he wants to play, because we suck. Fumble Chaos finishes with a 4 32 and 2 record. The locker room culture is abysmal. But having a meeting, we all agree that we can be champions if we just band together and work hard. We went 25 games without winning, and we also led the league in red cards with eight. My read on the situation is this. Football is the throwing one, baseball is the hitting one, basketball is the bouncing one, soccer is the kicking one. I'm sure of it. I wish I had come to this conclusion sooner. We all would have benefited. So Kofi, what did we learn? Defense matters. Okay, uh, you have learned more than me. Uh, I have learned absolutely nothing. I have not gotten better. I've not improved myself or my knowledge of soccer in any way. Uh, my understanding of soccer has actually devolved, which is great because I'm trying to get dumber with every passing day. And today I did that. It's a lot of fun. Why do we do this? See, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's what dumb people say is, I don't know. <laughs> so before we go, let's talk about the game itself. Kofi, what was your impression overall of Football Manager? I feel like we barely even scratched the surface on the potential experiments that we can do in such a game. This is one of the most extensive sports games that I've ever played in my life. And there were a lot of details, a lot of things that I wanted to talk about in the script, but we only had so much time to actually do it. I love the fake emails. I love the fake Twitter. Uh, I love the fact that we could create our own formation. I love the fact that we had complete control over hiring staff and so on and so on. So. I'm very impressed with Football Manager, and I maybe we can try another experiment when we learn more about the sport. Speak for yourself, because I ain't learning shit. Uh -huh.